and DID in another episode of DID and D&D. <laughs> That's going to get so complicated to say. So today we're going to create a character for my altar. Um, we're going to go for Luna because she's been dying to do this forever and keeps bubbling about in my head. So Kat here is a DM. She can GM other games, but it's Dungeons and Dragons, so she's a DM. And she's basically going to take us through the character creation of what it would be like to take someone on a journey in the D&D world. So for those that don't play D&D, hopefully this will be a really nice introduction to the game and how to create characters. The only difference is the character we're creating aren't fictional ones that we're making up. They're actual personalities that are part of... I don't want to say disorder because I don't class it as a disorder, but a part of my life, the people that live with me in my head. Nothing. Stop squeaking at the door, sweetheart. <laughs> Welcome to say hi. I had to throw his bowman out of the room, which he's very mad at me about because yeah. he was chewing it and it gets horrible on camera. Yeah. No chewing on camera. Can't chew on camera, mate. No. Because I am not impressed, mummy. No, he is not impressed. <laughs> I look forward to see what he says in the speech bubble when the video goes up. Yeah. <laughs> so there's his old face. He says, I'm not impressed, interwebs. Not in. No. No. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I will hand over to the lovely cat, Julie. Okay. So obviously, um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the races and classes this evening. I'm not sure how far we'll get into Luna's sheet, um, whether we'll get necessarily uh, stats rolled, um, because this is a bit of a process and we want the community to be part of this, but also um, Luna to be involved in. And currently, well, she wasn't earlier. She, yeah, she's not. She's around because I can hear my when Luna comes through, it's almost like I get this flood of a really happy, joyous emotion. And I know that I get more kind of gesticular. You <laughs> haven't actually since our chat earlier. Yeah. Um, my voice will start to go higher pitch um, as she starts to kind of leak and come through. Whether there'll be a switch, we don't know. We'll find out. Yeah. Um, I probably won't even realise until I look back on the recording and go, oh, there she is. Yeah, she's in there. Oh. I'm going to hijack the video now. Hey, Nuffle, what do you want to be? He says, I want to be a blink dog. Okay. Um, so we were talking about, uh, before we start recording, um, puppers. We weren't talking about puppers. You're going to get very distracting this evening. Um, we were talking about uh, races uh, and the types of races that uh, you think uh Luna might be or there's the difference because obviously we're not talking about um if Luna was going to create a D&D &D character what D&D &D character she'd create or want to create which we discussed is probably going to be a tiefling mm -hmm. uh, but it's more about what D&D &D character represents um Luna yeah. uh so we were talking about the types of things and um Different different races have different sort of temperaments. So we talked about the problem with the tiefling is the tieflings have an well, it's not a problem. I love tieflings dearly myself, mm -hmm. uh, but they have in the D and D world in the the classic, um, especially fifth edition, which is what I've got here. So that's what we're using. Yeah. Um, they have a slightly infernal nature, so they are more likely to find it difficult to fit into societies or to fit into. Uh, certain places ought to be welcome they would probably often come with um, an element of suspicion so it doesn't mean they're necessarily inherently bad tieflings aren't they can be a range of very ones I've got a player in our game and she's a very good tiefling um, but they often are treated with a bit of distrust to start yeah. off with um, and we wanted we were talking about a kind of character that would um, mold into sort of be able to fit into society <laughs> Oh my god, Papa. We will build your Dungeons and Doggos character later. Yay, Dungeons and Doggos. <laughs> this is because I got rid of his bone. <laughs> Give me like the whole video. I'll be like, ah. <laughs> uh, so one of the things you actually said to me earlier that um 
you wanted a character for Luna that fitted into a uh, lot of places would be quite welcome um, and how you'd talk to someone else, how they'd said they'd sort of suggested Elf and you were like, the problem with Elf and Half Elves, they're not, Half Elves slightly more weirdly, Half Elves both fit into both and really don't fit into both. So they're quite complicated. And again, I think would be slightly wrong for, for Luna. But yeah. one of the things we mentioned was halflings, uh, which uh, tend to be able to blend into the ground, uh, into the crowd. Not They don't blend into the ground. No. <laughs> That'd be really cool. <laughs> if they were a druid, they could. I was like, druids, we can earth shape. But... Yeah. Uh, so they uh, are adept at fitting into a range of communities with uh, humans, dwarfs, elves, um they are inherently uh, stealthy, uh, but that's because they're unassuming in nature. Uh, they tend to avoid uh, unwanted attention, but they're very good at, at being uh, friendly. They're affable and cheerful people. Um, and I just thought that description was quite uh, good for Luna, although they do tend to be fairly sometimes solitary creatures, um, okay. either hermits or they'll go around in traveling groups and bands. Um, something else we discussed was, I don't think she'd be a dwarf. No. She's definitely not a dwarf. She's not grumpy enough. No. Um, and I feel like ale either. So. No, no. Um, and I don't think she'd be a dragonborn, um, oh. especially because depending on, you know, obviously chromatic have a, a very different path to the metallic ones. Um, not a half-orc. And at the moment, by the way, everybody... Uh, who is new to D&D, I'm sure there's lots of people sitting there going, Cat, there's loads of other races. There are. I know. I have all my bloody books here. And if you've ever been to my house, you know what they are. But right now, we are looking in this book to start with. Um, we probably won't necessarily decide. I might send Danny some other ideas uh, that we can pick up uh, later when we come back to the character sheets. But uh, I thought we'd start with the player's handbook, because if we're going to introduce people to D&D, this is this is where you start, people. This is pretty much all you need. Um, you've got your races, your classes, how to build your character sheets, um, which probably doesn't waffle quite as much as Cat, but I do like to waffle. Um, actually, it's, it's a pretty chunky book. Um, it has things about alignments. So we've discussed the kind of alignments um, a character could be. Um, what have you thought about what alignment you think Luna would be? Oh, gosh, yes. What do you think she'd be? Luna would absolutely definitely be chaotic good. OK. Because yeah. she very much has a heart of gold, but will do really stupid things for the right reason. So she is absolutely the one that will cause like a traffic accident or like a traffic jam to save a duckling in the road. But the duckling in the road, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it deserves it. So for people who are, it deserves to be saved, not run over. Yeah, yeah, not to run That over. may have sounded like I was like, yeah. Kill the duck. I was actually looking for something in the book. Okay. For those listening uh, who've never, I'm hoping there's some people there. The alignments are, they're an interesting thing. Some people find them, um, they don't like having the alignments. There's a lot that you can read in the community about the alignments, but they're quite handy. Keep going. They're quite handy for uh, new players to understand how to the kind of actions of that character. So where uh, Danny said uh, chaotic good, uh, the classic description for that is creatures act as their conscience directs. Uh, little uh, regard to what others expect, but they are still trying to do good things. So it's more about not doing the traditional good sense so yes you saved the duckling that was the good thing but you know you did cause a traffic accident so it's that yeah. kind of because not... i think that works really well to how to how she is as an altar so luna is she's a protective altar but she does it in a i'm going to distract you from everything bad in the world so we're going to ignore all of that <laughs> and just be fun and friendly so anyone that knows me if i'm off in luna land Regardless of how upset you are, or if you have some stress or trauma in your life, I will want to be there for my friends. It can appear as though I don't care because Luna is protecting me from any negative 
outburst because she understands that we can't deal with any more emotional turmoil or anything at the minute. So it's that's why I think she'd be very much chaotic good, is that she never she never does anything with the intention to harm. She never wants to do anything, but it's always this is what I feel is the right thing to do. Yeah. And she will do it. Um, she'll be really pleased to know that I've just read the, because uh, in the uh, handbook it gives a couple of uh, particular races that could be chaotic good or more likely to be. And it lists unicorns. <laughs> oh, God, no! Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> she wants to be a unicorn. <laughs> I know she probably does. I've, I've said the wrong thing, haven't I? Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, she wants to be a cat. She be a unicorn. <sighs> I mean, she okay. can definitely be a cat. Um, like an actual cat rather than a tabaxi. Well, I was gonna say tabaxi, but I, d- I mean, if, I don't know. Let right, okay, <laughs> internet. We might need your help here. Oh, right, D and D. Race. Um. Uh, right okay we will come back to this um I might have to do a bit of uh, looking internet do message me I think we can get a half unicorn at the least stat yes! so we will... Christ. That is... <gasps> wow that was so high pitch oh my god I'm sorry if not fuck it she's so excited sorry internet <laughs> And she's so excited. If if there isn't one out there, internet, help me build one. Let let's Can make build let's a unicorn. For a let's make Luna's <laughs> dream come true. Let's make her a chaotic good unicorn. unicorn. Probably a half cute unicorn, half yeah. human baby. Yeah. Yeah, she'd be like a very sparkly human. Oh my gosh, she's going excited. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Danny. <laughs> I'll try to hold on. So I like gripping stuff to try and stay here. <laughs> so, hi, Luna. So, hi. So, for those that don't know what's happening with with DAD, when you are co-conscious, is it's kind of like two people are trying to drive my spaceship at the same time, as I showed in the last video with Ro- with Rocket and Quill. Um, I watched a wonderful video, and I'm gonna. Um, do a shout out to Dissocia did who have just done a little video about switching and she mentioned about leaking how when alters can kind of leak through and I was like it's like alter osmosis it's like high emotions and like high alter kind of low emotions will just kind of seep through <laughs> it's kind of what happens it's kind of what's happening now um is my voice <laughs> <laughs> All right, sweetheart. You're gonna be a unicorn. It's gonna be a half unicorn, a sort of half, okay. half human, half unicorn. Yeah, what, because you what? need to have. We'll, we'll we'll work on that. I'm gonna look for stats the next time we do this. So now, yeah. what do you think your class is gonna be? What do you want to do? I want to be able to do like some kind of magic, mm-hmm. but I want to be able to look after people. Okay. So, so a cleric or a druid. Or Ooh. Danny suggested a bard for you. Bards are <gasps> I could sing. Yeah, you could sing. You can, can sing and heal people bad. at the same time. But you can also sass people a little bit. Bards can do a little bit of sassing if they want to. But they can also be nice and I'm sing. Not very sassy. Girl, that's thing. I, I can try and sass someone. I'll be getting right, my cat well. just singing then. I'd be like, that's the wrong colour for you, but you look really pretty. That's the I love it. <laughs> I can't sass people. No, but it's beautiful. Okay, so yeah, so do you, clerics. So for people there who are watching, who are like now they're just talking about random classes. We have no idea. Everyone's got really excited, and we don't know what's going on anymore. Uh, a cleric is your standard healer. Um, Claire is quite an interesting class because you can do your standard, uh, a lot of the um, 
types of clerics you can be uh, archetypes you can have a uh, proper full-on healing all about life you can have some that are about more fighting um and more upfront. uh but i don't think you'd be an upfront. i think you'd be definitely in the back healing making sure everyone's okay yeah yeah also clerics are very good with their buffs as well so they can give everybody like you know aid to protect them or bless to give them yeah. extra oomph in I, their day i want something where when I'm with people, I can, like a cheerleader, I want something where I can, like, inspire people to do better and I can do, like, little things where they can be stronger or a little bit better and if they struggle a little bit, I can be like, hey, quick, take this. And okay, right now I can hear, even though we're recording this and the internet not even watching yet, I can hear the internet screaming, going, cat, go back to a bard! <laughs> Bards inspire. They do oh. inspiration. They give out inspiration that can help an ally. Oh, okay. um, is that the one where people? I don't. I don't D and D very well. I watch some of the stuff that the others do. Is that the one where Scanlan sings and people get to roll a different dice? Or... Yes. Yeah. So oh, basically, okay. you can inspire someone, and then within ten minutes, uh, of from that inspiration, they can add uh whatever dice you have to a dice roll. Uh, so as you get stronger you level up and you get a higher dice you can give out um and some bards can do other interesting things with their inspiration to help the allies on the board um a lot of their magic is very similar to druids uh no sorry clerics and have things like the buffs in your debuff so you can put the oh, enemies okay. down a bit and buff up your party a bit and make so them be like you're not being very nice and um, can i yeah. <laughs> literally that is being a bard so you're not being very nice and taking hit points from a baddie. Yay! Can I like stop them doing this stuff? So if they like, if they try to like take down my party, can I say no? Uh, like, you, so you them. could, that would be interesting. So there were things we could do. So you've got, um, uh, depending what is happening, if it was in an encounter, uh, you'd be able to do reactions anyway. But if you were okay, a guard, okay. we'd make you uh, take the feet war caster, which means that on a reaction, you can throw a spell out. Just kind of handy, um, but also, uh, oh, well, also learn counter spell. Counter spell's handy because it's like, and a reaction. Don't you do that spell, bad person? Yeah, uh, but actually, the next thing is so bard. Okay. Uh, bard unicorn. Your bard unicorn. It's amazing. <laughs> and you might kill me. <laughs> um, so. There's different types of bards. Um, your standard, when I say different types of bards, it, it, this is where it starts getting confusing internet for those who aren't D&D players. So you have what's called a class. Okay. You have your race and your class, so path, unicorn, bard. And okay. then you have your uh, sort of what is a subclass. So for a bard, it's called their college. Um, so I'm going to read you, Luna, the standard ones in the book here okay. and see what you like i've got an idea i think i know what you might like but i have a feeling i don't have it on me so we might have to come back to that <laughs> okay. um it's a one i think is a custom build by from a friend and i'll have to see if i have it um but your bards yeah so your college of law um so you are it's more about knowledge uh, and exploring law and and I don't think that's really no your face has already told me Luna. <laughs> uh, College of Valor is um, these these bards gather in mead halls or around great bonfires to sing deeds of the mighty both past and present. Um, they oh they have an interesting inspiration so they have an additional use of inspiration. Um, which is a combat inspiration. So you can also, as well as giving inspiration um, as a standard bard, okay. you can add that to um, a, a damage against someone. So it takes off the damage. Oh, that gives them a bit of AC protection. Okay, that's yep. AC. So that's that's sort of is thing. that the armor thing? Yeah. So AC yeah. is their armor class. So basically, you. Um, can funny. Face, uh, help protect someone you see rather so when they've got uh someone attack it and they can roll that and have extra armor 
hopefully okay. avoid it. So those are the standard ones in player's handbook. Okay. Now I just have... gonna put Lothal's Bowman out because he's just come back in with a bomb. Uh okay, these ones. Oh, right, so there's one that's called College of Glamour. This is the one I was thinking of for you. Um, okay. One of them. Um, these uh, bards uh, have matured their craft in the vibrant realm of the Feywilds or under the tutelage of someone who dwelled there. Um, they're, tu they're tutored by satires. Uh, Eladrin and other Fey. These bards learn to use their magic to delight and captivate others. Yay! So they have. Uh... Oh yeah, so you can use your Fey magic to imbue your allies with vigor and speed. Ooh. So you can help people. Um... You can move like move people around the board. Uh, oh, enthralling performance. Ooh. If you perform for at least one minute, you can turn, attempt to inspire wonder in your audience by singing, reciting a poem or dancing. At the end of the performance, choose a number of humanoids within 60 feet of you who watch and listen to all of it, uh, up to a number of equally the modifier. Um, if they fail a wisdom saving throw, they're charmed by you. <gasps> Ooh, everyone's charmed by me. Everyone is charmed by you. Um, so that's, I just, some of the words, at sixth level, you'll get mantle of majesty. <laughs> you know, I don't even know what it is. Uh, you can cloak yourself in fey magic uh, that makes makes others want to serve you. <laughs> As a bonus action, you can cast the spell command. Oh. Uh, without uh, spending, an, uh, expending a spell slot. So again, a little bit for... Scala would like that because it's very kind of, you will do this. But I think I'd be like, no, you're bad. Put your sword away. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's the thing with command is that it can be used in quite an aggressive or um, more aggressive manner. Or it can be used nicely. Cool. Okay, so College of Glamour is a, a, a pretty strong contender. Yeah. You quite like that one. I quite like um, that. What I will do is, if you want, Luna, would you like, or Danny as well, uh, if you'd like me to send the suggestions over so you can read them through. You don't have to make a firm choice tonight. Obviously, the unicorn is set. Yay! And that is, I'm not taking that away from you. Unicorn is set, Bard is set, but you can have a look at the, some of the colleges and some of the things they do um, yeah. if you want to. Yeah, that'd be cool, because anyone that's watching, <clears throat> now you've met me, hi. Um, if you see some of the other videos, I think I'm on, I'm on a couple of them. So feel free to watch them. And if you think that there's any that seem to suit me, yeah, by I, all means. I think we're probably not going to get all of it set tonight. And no. um, this is very because one of the things that me and Danny um, discussed earlier is that we wanted this to be kind of an introductory to D and D yeah. as well as D I D. Yeah. <laughs> um. The other one I was thinking for you, other okay. than College of, College of Glamour, uh, <laughs> Glamour, is, so this is, so for everyone out there, by the way, the book I got College of Glamour out of is Xanathar's, which Yay! is uh, a very, very uh, good additional add-on. You don't need to do it, have it to play the game, but I like to own all the books, so I can, you know, play all the game. Um, this one, you'll be pleased to know, is... Eldore! Yeah. Yes. I think it's in here. This is where I'm going to be going. Oh, it's not in this one, is it? It's in. No, the internet's probably screaming at me. It is his <laughs> College of Maestro. It's not on there. It's, by the way, everybody, it's on the DM Guild. Um, it's just a place where you can buy, find lots of... Um, <laughs> So everyone out there who doesn't know, the DMs Guild and for Luna is a place where a lot of uh, people out in the community who write RPGs, uh, who design uh, classes for D&D uh, &D characters, uh, monster stats, 
modules they can release it on the dm's guild and they can sell it for you know like 99 uh, 99 cents or however much they want and and hopefully make a little bit of money back from their writing stuff um cool. but matt must did a, a college uh of uh maestro which basically the bard and i thought this might be quite good for you because you like your singing and he takes the music of the battlefield or takes the sounds of the battlefields and turns it into music around so and, but takes the sound of people and other people's you could be someone battle cry or someone shout or a clash of a sword and take turn all the sounds around you into music so i'm not like fighting i'm just dancing in the battlefield you're dancing in the battlefield yeah <laughs> and you're also you're taking all that horrible nasty battle and you're making it pretty sounds that's amazing actually i mean come on think about it <laughs> little baby group okay <laughs> baby group <laughs> okay so i think for now, we're going to settle on uh, a half unicorn uh, bard, uh, college, college of Maestro. But of course, as Luna has asked uh, the internet, if there's anything you're thinking, take out, why didn't you think of this? It's really obvious. Uh, <laughs> send us in because um, we're not going to, you know, if there's, you're, I, I'm assuming you're happy if there's something that fits more, you gel with uh, Yeah, that. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If someone comes along and is like, this one allows you to do, like, this amazing, like, flying thing. You can, like, fire rainbows. Then I want that. Well, this is the next thing. So now we're, we're a spellcaster. What yeah. we'll do is when we start building your stat sheet, we'll start looking at um, what level you'd be and how many spell slots you'd have and how many spells you would know. Um and something i quite like to do is okay. i'm very keen on reskinning spell aesthetics to suit the player <gasps> so then like this is hamster size unicorns yeah yeah so like how uh, matt has done with uh critical on how uh jester's um uh spiritual weapon is a bit is it so I've got a character who is a uh, warlock, but her, uh, for example, her Eldritch Blast spell is a Radiance uh, Sphere. So it's it's just she re aesthetics things to suit her. Uh, her poison spray is pink glitter glue. <laughs> so yeah, we can totally it's totally to reskin things and tweak things to to make your aesthetic work. Amazing. Um. So pink sparkles, bright pink colours, sparkles, purple, unicorns, rainbows. Yeah. I'm going to make a note of this. Uh, so when we start <laughs> designing spells, we'll know. Um, unicorns, pink. Right. Also, half. I'm writing down your uh, as it stands, your character. If we get on the sheet, but this is going to be the start of it. So half unicorn, <laughs> bard. This is amazing. College of Maestro, possibly. Or Glamour. <gasps> this would be amazing to cosplay. I now, Danny plays some RPGs. You said you... Do you play any, Luna? Not really. <clears throat> Not really. Danny likes to play characters that are boring. Because they're either, like... They like to shoot arrows, or they're, like, really mean. Okay. And, like, bitchy. And it's just... It's not me. <laughs> So what do you, so we're do, doing a spellcaster, what do you want to do with your character? Uh, you want to help people, yeah? I want to help people. Um, oh, can I talk to animals? Uh, you probably could learn that spell, because the advantage with a bard, bards are clever spellcasters, because they get to, at certain levels, learn other spellcasters' magic. Wow. So you can nick a druid uh, speak with animals if you wanted. Yeah. Could I, could I, there's a, oh, there's one that Danny's telling me there's like a polymorph? That's in Red yep. Dwarf. <laughs> there is a polymorph spell. You can turn yourself into other things. Can I turn other people into other things You can also well? turn other people into other things if they're willing. <gasps> or if they're not willing, I think they have to fail a saving throw, which is fine. So it's all being really mean. I could just turn them into a squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Or pink fluffy bunny rabbit. Everyone's gonna be fluffy bunnies. Everyone's gonna be fluffy bunnies. They are. Oh, oh dear. Okay, so speak to. I'm just writing down. Speak to animals. Polymorph. 
I can feel Danny coming back now because you get your technical with stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, if she does, that's fine because we'll come back. There's so much more that you uh, that we can come back to Luna for. I'll, I'll stick around anyway, but I, I think I'm going a bit. <laughs> All right, so crossover. <laughs> you're in a weird place okay so we've got an idea of the kind of things we, we want uh to to build into this character um okay. i'm assuming does danny have dice to roll stats do you want to roll luna's stats out Yay! Ooh, which dice? uh you want the d6 okay Okay, and you want four of those. They're the boring square ones. Aren't They're they? the boring square ones. I'm sorry. Where are that dice? Reese has been playing with them. I have one, two. I have three d6 at the minute. Okay. I'm the way. You got three there, yeah. I have three here, yeah. Okay, so if you can roll those three, yeah. What are the numbers? Four, five, and two. Okay, can you roll one of them one more time? Yeah. Okay. Two. <laughs> okay. Right, so your first set of stats is a four, a five, and a two. What we do is we'll then add that up to make your uh, overall score. For those people are watching, wondering what we're doing, for Luna, you're wondering what we're doing. The way you roll your stats is there's six stats or main okay. abilities in D and D. So uh, dexterity, strength, con constitution, intelligence, charisma, and wisdom. Um, we're going to roll the dice six times, and you roll it four, four times six. We'll, we'll show you. Right, so you've done your first one. Roll those three dice again. Okay. Um, hi, I'm back. Hi, you're back. <laughs> I'm back. Five, six, and three. Five, six, three. And one more time. Just one. one. Of them. Yep. Yeah. Damn it, one. Okay, that's fine. So we'll keep those ones. Okay, so again. All three? Did six times. Ah, that one fell off. That one. Two, three... And six. Okay, and one more. For all three. No, for one. basically, because I want I'm looking for four numbers each time. Four. Four. Okay, so that's cool. Drop the two. So in that instance, people, what I did is you're basically looking for four numbers. So she, Danny had a two, three, six, and a four, and then you drop the lowest. So we dropped the two. So we've kept the four, three, and the six. So that's cool. what, what I'm doing. Um. But obviously, I haven't had to drop any because your sec your last one's always been the lowest roll so far. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's we've done that three times. We've got three scores yeah. and do three more. And then I think, do you want to leave it there for this evening, Danny? I think so. Yeah, because I think yeah. that's enough to kind of introduce people to it. Luna's had a bit of fun. We know what she's got, and then it'd be nice for <laughs> for people to kind of influx us with what they think she should have and any kind of spell option ideas yeah. that yeah. that would be fun and um i have no idea what she's said i know roughly she's been squealing a lot um okay her. you don't know what she wants to be not properly okay um i know we were talking about the possibility of a unicorn before she that, over is that this is a ha half unicorn bard <laughs> sorry mate <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't disappoint. She was okay. so happy, a unicorn. What college has she taken? Uh, we're either looking at College of Maestro, which is one of Matt Mercer's. Okay, that's so the music. The uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or College of Glamour. Oh, okay. Very yeah. fayish. Yeah. So what I was going to do is I was going to send them to those two, or if you've got them, you can have. She can read them. I don't know how that works. We don't have a lot of hard copies of stuff. I will send I a lot you, of digital ones. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then obviously if anybody suggests anything else, but that's what we've got to so far. Oh, God. It's very okay. excited. Um, so yeah, interwebs. Hi, <laughs> Danny back again. You just met Luna. 
She was, honestly. There was a full moment. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if anyone has any questions of um, what it's like <laughs> to do that, hopefully you've seen a bit of... I'm hoping that anyone that is watching this because they like D&D and are curious about DID, that you've learned something. Like, if you watch like the movies and see like split and glass and stuff where people switch out and kill people as you've hopefully just seen well they didn't kill anyone i don't think she could kill a fly to be honest oh my god no but it was adorable um but yeah if do you want to do the last three stats or do you want to leave it there yeah let's do the last three ones okay let's do them we've got dice we'll roll yeah. okay so roll them three and then one basically roll four three and one. yeah, yeah. They'll roll. Oh, six, six, and three. This one's going to be crap. Isn't it? Five. Nice. So again, I've dropped the three. So that stat is a uh, in total will be six, six, five, which is an eighteen. Nice. nice. Okay, right. Uh, that'll probably next... be Luna's charisma. <laughs> yeah, that'll be Luna's charisma. All right, next one. Oh, one, one, two. Okay, roll one more. Three. <laughs> okay, so drop one of the ones. I mean, yeah. maybe strength. Strength. Yeah. yeah. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So one more. Five, three, two, four. Okay, cool. So that's a five, three, and a four for that one. Right. So we'll leave that there. Yeah, and then we can pick like how wise or intelligent she is, how yep. strong she is, dexterity. Yeah, because obviously, depending whether it's you or Luna, it will be a, a slower or quicker process because you know a lot more about T D than Luna does. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be able to kind of go, oh, yeah, that one. Because, like, strength will be low on um, wisdom and intelligence. She's not going to score. She's pretty intelligent. Wisdom, she's not going to score that highly, I don't think. Um, charisma, it will be her strength, which will probably help with the bard spell stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Um, it's their spell casting need yeah so um, we'll so druids are uh spell casting is wisdom uh and wizards would be intelligence so bards yeah. work really really well actually because they need high charisma yeah right. um she's not going to be a strong person she's relatively dexterous but she's not overly stealthy so her perception and stuff will be crap um. <laughs> right. well. so i hope everyone has fun <laughs> I mean, Luna did. I can tell you that. I'm, <laughs> and I'm going to be watching this going, oh, God. <laughs> let me know when you watch it back. And I'm sorry. I try not to encourage, but, you know, she's so happy. People can't help it. She's, she's infectious. I know. I didn't want to disappoint. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I, look, I look forward to seeing what you say when you watch this back. Messing up my hair all the time. She's doing this at one point, like properly full on playing with them. <sighs> okay, so right. thank you for watching again this week. <laughs> Hopefully, you've learned something or had some fun. And yeah, I'm looking forward to. Do you think we should do this part for each of the altars and then go into more spells and stuff as yeah as we build up and get more of an idea, or should we focus more on? Yeah, we could try that. And then obviously we've said if people have a suggestion or they want to go back to something or if you, we decide, we, we haven't really got a formula yet. So let's let's try that and see. I just think if anyone that wants to kind of follow the journey, if we do like the part builds of each of them and then kind of go back, okay, let's go back to Luna and flush out that's her character that. more when everyone else has kind of seen the other ones. Because then anyone else that's watching that plays D&D will be like, oh, well, to kind of get like a decent balanced sort of party, would she have this? I'm not going to have a balanced party in my head, let's be honest. But <laughs> it at least give me the idea as to what I live with. <laughs> all right. So we will um, see you all in a couple weeks. weeks. Yeah. 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 All right. Bye. <laughs>